Hello, and welcome back to Ask a Monk. The next question comes from um, a person who has what appears to be a insurmountable problem in their lives. They're asking about addiction. Um, how do you deal with states of addiction? And specifically here the person is worried that uh, their addiction to pornography and masturbation are ruining their life, which uh, is of course a sad thing to occur. No one wants to have their life ruined. So, uh, so in, in, in general we're talking about addiction here, but specifically we're talking about pornography and masturbation, which are um, probably two of the least discussed uh, things in Buddhism. I don't think you'll find too many Buddhist, uh, at least in terms of Buddhist monks, I don't think you'll find too many Buddhist monks giving talks about these things. Um, but I'm not afraid to do so and I don't think um, I, I don't think Buddhists would, should be afraid to do so. I think often culturally it's a taboo uh, to talk about these things but if you look at the Buddhist texts Texts they are often quite explicit, at least in 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 uh, monastic uh, circles. You know, talking about uh, the nature of of these states and these things. So, um, I I think these pornography and masturbation are two very strong addictions. They're two addictions which are a problem in our in in the world. Uh, a, a big problem, or th they're quite prevalent. Let's put it that way. Let's not get into um, judgment or par or um, um, yeah, judgment. We'll, we'll not get into some kind of categorization as as a problem yet, because I think that's the first answer. Um, on on a broad level, the first the first way to overcome any addiction is to reevaluate it. Uh, the Buddha started his talk on uh, on on Paticca Samuppada, which is dependent origination, with uh, ignorance. So, in the Buddha's teaching, it's not addiction that is the problem. Uh, even though, on a basic level, the Buddha said, "Yes, it's it's our craving for things that leads to suffering." But the question is, why do we crave? And the the Buddha's answer is based on it, on ignorance, because we have a misunderstanding about the the object of our desire. So it's not that somehow we have to um, we we have to cut something out or destroy some kind of addiction. You know, this this addictive tendency. We have to see clearly, we have to see the object clearly. The reason why we're addicted to X, Y, and Z are because we don't understand them. And the Buddha's teaching is that if we just understood these things as they were, we would not cling to them, we would not desire for them. That's, that's it, that's all there is. There's no uh, brainwashing involved, there's no theory, no dogma simply understanding things as they are and the um, claim is that when you do so you won't be attached to them, you won't want them, you won't have any desire for them or for the, erad the eradication of them. So when you say that masturbation is r and pornography are ruining your life, um, I have to suspect that as with so many other addictions in so many other cases uh, there is there's some suppression going on and some judgment going on uh, in regards to these states. Probably in all truth, if you're honest with yourself, you'll find that it's not ruining your life. That uh, you're you're most likely overreacting, and it's this overreaction that is causing a uh, causing a reaction, causing the opposite effect. That instead of um, instead of uh, chasing after them, you're, you're repressing them. And instead of dealing with the, the, uh, the emotion and the addiction, you are clinging to it.
you are clinging to it as a problem and when you the, the more you uh, the more you worry and and uh, um, uh, concern yourself and are upset by the situation the more of a problem it becomes the more attachment there is uh, and the less able you are to deal with it because rather than going deeply into it you want to push it away you want to keep it at arm's length and the problem is if you keep things at arm's length you aren't able to understand them um, masturbation pornography they have to do with this desire they have to do with, with, with several things and specifically in the Buddha's teaching it's something that I think is is um, missed by um, missed by probably the majority of, of Buddhists and, and the majority of people who study the Buddha's teaching um, only because the majority of Buddhists, Buddhists and, and people who study the Buddhist teaching are not really practicing meditation. For those people who practice meditation it becomes quite clear that Paticca Samuppada, the Buddhist teaching on dependent origination is the answer that you're looking for. It, it answers if you understand it uh, from a meditative point of view or from a point of view of, of ultimate reality um, it, it answers this problem of addiction it, an, it, it gives the path out of addiction it helps you to understand how to overcome addiction starting with, with creating wisdom and understanding now the, the point being that in in our addictions, in this case, this is a very good example, and it it, it applies very well to uh, dependent origination. That uh, th there are several things that are we're being attached, we're coming becoming attached to, or we're craving or clinging to. <clears throat> the first one is a um, a sense object, something that we see, something that we hear, something that we smell, taste, feel, or think. So pornography. This is this is specifically related to the visual. When you see something, and and um, you know, let's give an example of um, well, in, in, I guess in either case, you know, the human body. You see the human body, and it stimulates some kind of response. Well, this is exactly what the Buddha is talking about in Paticca Samuppada, the dependent origination. The, it's the six senses, the seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and even thinking that lead to a pleasant sensation or an unpleasant sensation. Just likewise, when you see something ugly, it creates an unpleasant sensation in, in your body and in your mind. Um, when you see something neutral, it creates a neutral sensation. It can calm you even. When you see a still pool of water or nature, it calms the mind. So it creates a, a, a sensation. So in the case when you see the human body, it creates a pleasant sensation. <clears throat> that pleasant sensation creates a desire, um, a desire for the object, for the, um, the, ob the, the, the object that is bringing the sensation. You want to see it more, you want to see it again. Because of that desire, there arises a clinging where you need, in a sense, to see that object again. Uh, and this is what leads to the addiction to pornography in this case you'll find that you can't just sit there you'll start to think about it again and you'll 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 try to think of how you can get it and and where and you can get it and when you're going to get it next and so on it becomes an addiction and this is the how the cycle goes and then you see it again and it creates more pleasant sensations and this is how the brain is being wired you're wiring the brain to like it more and more and more the the connection between the uh, sensation or the, the the object, the sensation, the, and the the craving, um, so or or at least the first two, when you when you make the connection between the sense object and the sensation, the pleasant sensation, and the judgment that that it, make a judgment that that is a good thing, you're going to uh, to always make that connection again and you're going to say when you see something even though the pleasant sensation hasn't arisen you're going to want it um, because you know that it's going to you remember that it's going to bring you that pleasant sensation and this is really what we've done um, with, with our minds already this is how we are uh, at this time we so 
we recognize the human body as something that's going to bring a pleasant sensation. Uh, now, now this it starts with, of course, masturbation because you know objectively, and this is the key. Looking at it, the human body shouldn't bring a pleasant sensation to the mind. There, there's no connection there between seeing the naked human body and uh, and a pleasant sensation. You know, we've when we were young, we saw our parents naked, we saw our our siblings naked, and and it it didn't bring that about. Um, but later, you know, as we hit puberty and so on, and not only that, but through our uh, connect the the creation of these connections in this life, we it it becomes um, an obsession, in fact, where we we are clinging to that. So puberty will give us this desire for the the, the sexual act, but it's through our repeated repeated. Uh, connection between the human body and the sexual act that creates the attachment to the the, the human body. The uh, so we we know objectively this shouldn't be the case. The human body is just another body. There should be no more attachment to the human body uh, than than to a monkey's body or or. Um, a cow's body or or a fish's body, in fact, because they have the same anatomical structure, basically. Um, but we've come to, you know, from a Buddhist point of view, through successive rebirth, to create this through our repeated um, uh, connection, you know, con making connections. In this way, we've built up this addiction, and that's what's given us this course increasingly coarse body um, and um, caused us to, to to even be born with this sense of attachment to the human body and um, you know leads of course to the chemical reactions in the brain and so on so this is an explanation of how it happens now how do we get out of it how do we you know, the, the real answer to your question <coughs> as I said through uh, wisdom, we can come to see through this. We can come to uh, overcome it simply by understanding it for what it is. We do this in several ways. Now, I've already hinted at one of the ways. The first one is the um, examination and the, an uh, the um, analyzing of the human body. And there are several ways you can do this. You can simply take apart the human body. One of the most uh, basic ways of under coming to understand the nature of the human body and coming to give up this misperception uh, that the human body is something desirable, but to, to break this connection. So even though we might, as a result, still be attached to pleasant sensations, there will be no... Um, uh, subjective uh, um, connection between the human body and those sensations. So we might see a naked, a beautiful woman, a beautiful man, and uh, you know, the, the, the word beautiful doesn't come to mind because when you look at the body you can see that there's nothing beautiful about it. Uh, and whether you say it's an ugly or a beautiful thing uh, is, is simply subjective, that in reality it is what it is. So we start to take apart the body, you start to look at the the hairs on your head, and you just think about them. And you can even repeat, you know, we have this in meditation, the classic meditation technique is to repeat the word of the object you're focusing on, because that allows, it's a mantra, this is the, what the word mantra means. The mantra focuses your mind on the object. So we take our hair as our object, we say to ourselves, hair, 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 and we just focus on it. Part of it is learning about what is hair. You know, hair is like grass that is planted in your skull, and it's oily and it's greasy and it's got uh, pieces of scalp sticking to it. If you don't wash it, it smells, um, and and so on. It has split ends and and so on. And if you learn, the more you learn about hair, and the more you think about it and consider it, you come to see that there's nothing beautiful about it. This idea of you know, you see someone's beautiful hair, uh, is is taken apart because you see it clearly for what it is, that actually there's just an illusion there. And the illusion is this this conception that we've created in our body, oh, this beautiful hair. And we see another type of hair, not beautiful. Once you 
uh, look at hair for what it is, then you have no concept of this is beautiful, this is, is not beautiful, because you see it for what it is. This is clearly the case. There's nothing that says this hair is beautiful, this hair is not beautiful. Someone has an afro, someone has a, a perm or whatever, it's just hair. And then you go on to the, the, the body hair, you know, the body hair in your armpits, in the pelvic area, on your chest, and so on, on your, your arms. And you think about that hair in a similar way. Uh, you, you think about your, uh, the, the, the teeth. Uh, you, you think about your teeth, and your people you say, oh, what beautiful teeth you have, look at that beautiful teeth. And then you start to think about teeth. Well, actually, they're you know they're yellow, a little bit yellowed, and they're like these things that are stuck in the gums, and they bleed, and and when food gets on them, and so on. And you come to see that actually there's nothing particularly positive or beautiful about teeth either. They are there's nothing particularly ugly about them, though they can seem ugly when you start to really look at them. If you look objectively, if you were to you know when you pull a tooth out of your body. It doesn't look beautiful anymore. It looks quite ugly and gross and disgusting and so on. But eventually you come to simply see it for what it is. And you look at your nails, you look at uh, all the various parts of the body. You look at your skin and then you start going inside to all the organs. You take the body apart and you see that there's really nothing beautiful about it. This is one conventional way of, uh, of coming to understand, at least in a basic sense, the nature of the body. Um, but <clears throat> in an ultimate sense, this isn't going to cut it, uh, even though it can trigger some ultimate, uh, some true understanding of reality. Ultimate reality doesn't admit of these body parts, uh, because when you see the human body, you're not actually seeing these things. You're seeing light touching your eye, and when you can come to get, when you can come to this um, stage, where seeing is simply seeing, there's no thought of the person's hair and so on, there, there's only seeing. And you, you, you're able to see anything and see it simply for what it is, and there's no connection made. Seeing is seeing, because that's what it is. Uh, you don't see a human body and say, that's beautiful, because it's, you realize it's ridiculous to say that. This is light touching my eye, just like any other light. It's seeing. And so you know that's a human, but you know it conventionally, and it's, it, it, it has no... Um, positive or negative connotation. So this is a, perhaps a better way to approach uh, the, well, it for sure is a better way to, to approach addiction. So in the case of pornography rather than, you know, you can also take the body apart and that's a, a valid meditation practice but on a more ultimate level you should look at seeing. When you see something take it as seeing. So you see this you, know, you, got, you open a pornography magazine and, and you're looking, or you, you know, videos or whatever, looking at it, and you know, see it as seeing. Don't um, the, the first step. You know, I mentioned this before, but just to 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 really make it clear, the first step is to accept and to look, begin to look at. Um, so when I say you know, actually looking at the pornography, I, I really do mean just that. You're you're attached to these things, so you're going to go for them. When you go for them, um, you know, because there's no question of if, I unless you are suppressing them. You know, when you open it up and accept and say, yes, I am addicted to these things, then you go and you look at these things, and, and w when you're looking at them, you just, you know, s start to learn about them. This is where it starts. So, so yes, this is what I'm advocating. I'm not saying, you know, go uh, with no reason, but when you go and you're looking at these things, when you're looking at pornography, you look at it and say to yourself, seeing, seeing know that you're seeing. The mantra here is no longer hair, hair, or, or, or skin, skin, or teeth, teeth, teeth. Now the mantra is seeing. So when you see something, that's all it is. Seeing, seeing, seeing. And you'll see. If you do this a little bit, you'll see at least partially you've solved the problem. If you do it repeated, repeated, repeatedly, um, you will find that your mind changes. That you're able to look at it and see it just as seeing. That the connection that you made between this and and the sensation is gone, Is was a convention or was a creation in your mind. It wasn't real. There's nothing intrinsically beautiful about that. You'll see this. This isn't a theory. When you do this, you'll come to see that this is just seeing. Um, so yeah, looking at actually looking at the object, 
um, is going to be a great part. I mean, another example is smoking. Many people are addicted to smoking. So the best way to overcome smoking is not to find a way to avoid smoking. It's to learn about smoking. That when you're picking up the cigarette, apparently, this is what meditators tell me, I've never smoked, picking up the cigarette, know that you're picking it up. When you want the cigarette, wanting and so on. When you're smoking, when you're tasting the smoke, tasting, when you're inhaling, when you're feeling it in the chest and so on. If you do this enough, you're not going to want to smoke. You'll see there's nothing beneficial about it. That the connection between the pleasant sensation and, and the object was a uh, conventional one or was a conception in the mind, was one that you've created in your mind to an extent. Now, in terms of pornography, in terms of smoking, uh, there is the next step. So this is, this is one part of the problem. The next part of the problem is the actual pleasant sensation, and this has to do with either the nicotine in the case of smoking or the masturbation in the case of pornography, because you're, you know, clearly you are... Um, reinforcing the addiction when you masturbate, right? The connection, you, you feel happy, well, and then you, you create happiness. And you see that happiness is based or has some connection with this uh, object. So it's not going to work to simply destroy that connection because we're obviously creating it. The next um, connection that we have to break is between the pleasant sensation and the craving. We have to remove this idea that there is something beneficial about about the happiness, and this is probably mind mind blowing for most people if they've never studied um, things like Buddhism. But really, w what objective and an what answer can you give if I ask objectively or intrinsically what benefit do you gain from pleasure, from physical pleasure? What is positive about it? And you know, you can simply um, give a, a, a I believe it's a tautology that say it's it's good because it's pleasant, or it's 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 a good thing because it's pleasant. Pleasant um, pleasant states are good. Pleasant sensations are good because they're pleasant, which is meaningless, of course. And this isn't simply a, a, a tricky sort of argument. Um, it's not just a intellectual trick of sorts. It's actually true that there is no benefit and there's no intrinsic um, positive nature in a pleasant sensation and you don't have to take my word for this and you don't have this isn't a dogma or dogma that should be accepted when you examine the pleasant sensations no longer feeling guilty that oh now I'm feeling this pleasure I mean it's ridiculous really because we believe on the one hand that pleasure is good and we believe on the other hand that masturbation is bad well you know if one brings the other how can how can the one be bad and so we have all these other reasons like it it brings pleasure but it destroys my ability to relate to other people i believe the problems this person had were he felt that he couldn't relate to women i think it was a man um as a result of of masturbating uh, which I guess is understandable, but I'm not going to even really go there because um, I, I don't think that's really the, the the issue here. the The issue is this this clinging, this this craving for pleasant sensations, and the idea that pleasure is somehow positive. Because if you are able to understand that pleasure is uh, is not positive in any intrinsic way, in any intrinsic manner um, in any intrinsic way then you'll have no need to chase after women either um, you know, whether that's an agreeable thought to you or not I don't know but uh, we're, we're, we're thinking of objective objectivity here if you come to see that something you know objectively is useless is worthless then why would you want to chase after it after all if on the other hand through the practice of the Buddha's teaching, you come to see, no, actually these things are um, beneficial, then we're not asking you to give them up. If they are intrinsically beneficial, then keep them, develop them, um, sustain them. All we're saying is that there are certain things that you're going to see for yourself are uh, unbeneficial and, and useless, worthless. So, what we're what we're going to do here is look at the pleasant sensation. When you feel happy, when you feel pleasant, this is the second thing we're going to do. The first was the object of the desire. It could be something you see, 
hear, smell, taste, and the cigarette, and so on, uh, feel or think. And the second one is the sensation that it brings, or the sensation that uh, that arises as a result of it. So when you feel happy or pleasure, simply say to yourself, happy, happy, or pleased, pleased, or pleasure, pleasure, feeling, feeling, even. Uh, simply you know, trying to see it for what it is, getting rid of all of the baggage that we have surrounding it, all of this um, judgment that we make, this is good, this is bad, because it's mixed up at this point, right? We think pleasure is good, we think masturbation is bad, so we feel guilty about it, and the pleasure comes up, and we feel both good and bad about it. We're totally messed up. That's even worse than simply being addicted to the state. I suppose. I mean, I guess it's good to have some sort of restraint on a conventional level, but uh, it, it's certainly not an, an answer in an ultimate sense to to feel guilt about things. Guilt is actually a negative state. It creates suffering. It's part of the problem. So when we focus on it, we're going to get rid of both of these. We're going to see that there's no reason to like it and there's no reason to feel guilty about it. It is pleasure and um, it, it is what it is. We're just simply going to see it for what it is. This will help to reduce both sides. It will reduce our feeling of guilt, but it will also reduce our feeling of attachment to them. Once we come to know, th understand um, the sensation better, we won't have any desire for it. I mean, a good example is children in, uh, at Christmas. When you want something, when there's this tension involved with it, it, it's such a powerful feeling. And then Christmas morning you open and you got what you want, everything you got, everything you want, and suddenly the, 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 the pleasure's gone, the desire is gone, the, the, the happiness is gone. You know, the, there's no uh, desire for those objects anymore. This wonderful thing that you got, you know, it's it's there now. You can play with it, but you find the desire for it is is completely vanished because it's something that is familiar at this point. The pleasure is something that you've experienced, and there was no uh, tension involved, and so as a result, you, you're able to give it up. But, you know, to an extent, obviously, children next Christmas they want more, or or for their birthday or so on, and they always want more. So it's not really giving up, but it's in the same way. Here we're coming to be totally familiar with the object and the more you're able to become familiar with it and understand it the less tension there will be and the more uh, common and ordinary it becomes so that next time you feel the pleasure you don't feel any need not next time but through practice you don't feel any need to go the next step to say oh I feel pleasure now I have to uh, you know undertake to masturbate or to, to, to have another cigarette or to go to chase after the object that which um, that which brings pleasure this is the second step. The third step uh, is the desire desire itself because in the beginning, until you've fixed the problem, um, part of the acceptance and understanding is accepting and understanding that you are attached to the object. you do like the feeling, and this is probably i I would say where most of the guilt resides because we don't feel so guilty about the pleasure but we feel more guilty we might feel somewhat guilty about the pleasure we feel more guilty about our, our desire for it our liking of it you know we we want to have cigarettes we, we we want to masturbate we want the objects of our desire we want to look at pornography we really want to but we feel so guilty about it so both of these states have to be uh, given up uh, both of them. The guilt is not a positive thing either. So when you want something, um, part of giving up the wanting, part of being free from the wanting, is our ability to accept that we want it, to get rid of the tension, because that's really what it is. Desire is a sort of tension, it's stress. And uh, when you can see that it's stress, that you know, you, you look at it objectively, you say, okay, I'm not going to um, hit you, you know, just you know, let me let me see. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to scold you like a little child. And then you look and you see it for what it is. Um, you, you'll find that it's not so scary and it's not so um, well. Well, you'll see in the end that it's not so beneficial. It's not so worthwhile. It has no intrinsic benefit to it. 
you'll come to see that the problem with the desire is not that it's an evil, bad, immoral thing that you should feel guilty and sinful about. The problem is actually that it's stressful. That actually wanting things is a kind of a stress. It's a tension that exists in the mind. Your, your mind is not at peace. When you want something, you're actually suffering, in a sense. You're, you're, you're in a state of, of unease, of distress, of upset. When you can see that, and you see it simply by looking at the, the wanting, you want something, wanting, wanting, or liking, liking, when you like something, when you're taking a cigarette, when you're masturbating, you know, liking, liking. Honestly, this, if it, this is the way to overcome addiction. When you do that, um, it will destroy the link, it will destroy, destroy the chain, it will destroy any desire for, your, for the object, and it will destroy the clinging. So there may, will be the craving in the beginning, but it won't lead to clinging, because you'll see that the craving is useless, and you won't give rise to this idea of, uh, of, of chasing after the object, or of, of the goodness of clinging, of craving something. So you won't give rise to further craving and further wanting. These three um, stations, I would say, go back and forth between these three. The object of the desire, the pleasant sensation that it brings, and the, um, the, the desire that comes from the pleasant sensation. Um, yeah, so the, the object here is, actually I would say as an addition, the object here is not just the, f the, the form, the, the physical form of the pornography, it's also the physical act of masturbating. Um, that, you know, you can, if you, or, or the cigarette, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of other ideas so I don't get too caught up in this uh, obviously difficult subject to talk about in a public forum. But the act of, of, for instance, smoking, when you pick up the cigarette, picking up, when you, as I said, when you smoke, inhaling, when it goes into the lungs, you know, the physical act. And of course, in the same way, the physical act of masturbating. If you do it mindfully, you'll find that your addiction towards it, even if you're having um, sexual intercourse, if you start to do it mindfully, you'll find that your addiction for these things is, is lessened, because you see them clearly. You see that uh, the, the sexual act is not such a wonderful, glorious, you know, you can be ro as romantic as you like, but in the end it's, uh, um, it's quite a bestial animal sort of thing. It, in, of all the pleasures in the world, it's one of the, the, the basest, or not one of the basest, but it's not very high up there. Um, and I think, I've talked about this before, but I think one of the problems that, that occurs is that people aren't able to accept this sort of thing because of their their inability to pull themselves out of the human state. Um, we think of sex, sexual act, sexual acts, sexuality, as the highest um, because we can't think of it simply because we can't think of anything higher. Um, and I think it would be sad, really, looking at the complexity of the universe, if that were all there was, and if the height of the universe were, were, were even the human state. Uh, I think we've come to accept on some level that the human state is not the ultimate state, that there we could do with a lot of improvement in many ways, even just physically. So by what estimation can we say that um, the sexual act is, is perfect or is the highest or is even high in any sense of the word? Um, I think if we're able to pull ourselves out of out of this, we will come to see that uh, the human state is actually um, quite limited, and we'll be able to to rise above it. And um, you know, from a Buddhist point of view, this is going to allow us to be free from the human state, to be free from the limitations not to be free from all of the good things that come from be, being human, like wisdom and, and insight and, and love and compassion and so on, but to be free from all the negative uh, states, so to, to evolve uh, and to rise above this. Because only if you, um, only if you uh, are stuck in this idea that the human state is perfect, and I think this state this idea comes from a lot from religion, 
you know, if you believe in God, if you believe this is a, the cre divine creation. I think that's where this, even for people who are not religious, where this idea has come from. Uh, if you're not able to um, to break out of this, that I think that is, it's going to be quite difficult to to overcome states like masturbation because you still have the idea that we are perfect and copulation is is necessary for um, human development and for populating the earth and so on. We have all these ideas that these are good things. It's good to be human. It's good to populate the earth with more humans and so on and so on. Because we simply can't think of anything better. We've never seen anything better. We say, well, this is all there is. So what I can think of, well, the best is humans. You know, monkeys are not very far advanced. Uh, humans are more advanced. Humans should rule the earth, should rule the universe, in fact. When we have no reason to believe this sort of thing, we could find without talking about Buddhism, you could be visited by aliens who could be far superior physically even to us. Um, the idea that we have to uh, we have to copulate um, to to reproduce is simply a limitation of human beings. I, I mean and actually it's not because you know scientists can potentially create living beings in the laboratory. So uh, so the sexual act is is seen therefore unless you're a religious person you know and, and and religious in the sense of belief that this is a creation created by a benevolent god who in his benevolence created things like mosquitoes and plagues and war and famine and so on um, you know if you believe that then then there's a problem for you if 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 you're if you're able to let go of that sort of belief you'll come to see that the human state and all of these so-called uh, highest pleasures are, are really um, meaningless. But that's, that's simply, I think, one barrier that comes, this misunderstanding and this view that these are somehow intrinsically beneficial um, based on our religious views or simply based on cultural or societal views. If we're able to overcome those, we'll be able to do as I said and look at these things scientifically objectively and come to to see them for what they are. I guarantee that if you put this sort of practice into into practice um, that you will be able to overcome uh, addiction even very difficult addictions like smoking, masturbation, etc. Okay, hope this has helped. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the question. All the best.